So how do we change the scale of any layer in Adobe After Effects? Well, in this video, we're going to be covering how we can use keyframes to change the X and Y axis scale of any layer in Adobe After Effects, as well as the importance of anchor points in determining how the scale actually appears. So I have After Effects open. All I have is a simple background layer just to make it look slightly nicer and a shape that I've already pre-created, which is a rounded off square. Now, if you haven't got After Effects open too, I'd highly recommend you do that just so you can follow along with this tutorial. So I'm currently on the selection tool and the selection tool is just located to the left of the hand tool. And as you can see, the shortcut to it is V. And what I'm gonna do first is just press on our shape. So what we have is an anchor point. Now, if you're not actually already familiar with what the anchor point is, I have already made a video on what is an anchor. So I'd highly recommend that you check that video out before continuing onto this video just so it makes a bit more sense as to what we'll be covering. But the anchor point is basically very, very important in determining where the scale is actually going to originate from. But before I show you how that works, let's actually bring up the scale properties for this layer. So all we have to do is just go down to our timeline and make sure that the correct layer is selected and then press S on our keyboard. This is both for Windows and Mac in order to bring up the scale, which has a small stopwatch and a link with two values in it. So basically what these two values are is a X axis scale and a Y axis scale. So we can actually change the scale both in the X axis and in the Y axis. So the X axis goes from left to right and the Y axis from bottom to top. Now just to the left of that, we have a link, but I'm gonna explain what that is in just a minute. If we actually hover over any of these two values, as you can see, our cursor actually changes to the small hand with a arrow pointing left and right. If you hold down your left mouse key and drag to the right, you can actually increase the scale of your layer. If you drag to the left, you can actually decrease the scale of your layer. So this is just a quick way to be able to change the scale. If you want to input a specific value, so let's say 100, well, 100% is the original scale to which your layer was created, but you can also decrease it, say 50%. As you can see, it's now half the size and you can actually go all the way down to 0% where it actually doesn't actually appear anymore because the scale is 0%, so we can't actually see the shape at all. You can also actually go into the negative, so you can also do minus 100%, in which case it's now actually inverse the scale of our shape. But what I'm gonna do is just set it to 100%. And now let's actually demonstrate how the anchor point works. So as you can see, when I change the scale, it actually originates from a center point. So it's scaling to and from the center. But if I were to change the position of the anchor point, so if I just set it to 100, just to its original scale, and then press Y on my keyboard to bring up the pan behind tool or the anchor point tool, I can actually move the anchor point around my composition. So for example, I could snap it to this top right hand corner just by pressing command or control for windows on my keyboard. As you can see, it now snaps to this corner. I can let go of my mouse and my keyboard. And when I now scale the shape, it's actually going to scale from this new point. So this is the importance of the anchor point. It's always going to scale from this point. If I just press command and set it to go back to 100%. I can then also move my anchor point. You can move it off your shape. It doesn't have to be anywhere near your shape. So I could move it about here. And as you can see, when I decrease the scale, it's going to go towards the anchor point until it's at zero and then go the other way into the negatives, or I can actually increase this and go much further from where our 100% was. I'm gonna undo that once again. And then if we want to recenter our anchor point, the easiest way to do that is to go to the pan behind tool, which is just to the left of the shapes tool, hold command or control for windows on our keyboard and double click with our left mouse key on the tool itself in order to recenter our anchor point. So now we actually know how the anchor point works and how we can actually scale our object. Let's see how we can actually animate our scale. So in order to create an animation, all we have to do is go to where it says scale under our shape layer one, and then press on the small stopwatch just to the left of that in order to create a keyframe. As you can see the stopwatch is now blue, which means that we can now animate our layer. And where our time indicator is currently set to zero frames and zero seconds, We've now created a keyframe, which is a sort of timestamp. So how keyframes work is, as you can see when I hover over it, it says 0, 0, 0, 0, which is basically 0 frames, 0 seconds, 0 minutes, 0 hours. So this is basically where this keyframe is located. 
And then just to the right of that, we have 100%. And this information basically stores the information of the scale of the shape. So at the moment, both X and Y are set to 100%, which means that it's going to be showing 100%. If I then move my indicator, which is this blue line, just slightly further, so let's say, let's move it to four. And let's decrease the size of our shape. So if I just input zero and enter any of those two values, as you can see, it's done two things. First of all, we can't see our shape anymore, which was expected because we set it to 0%. But we've also created a new keyframe at four seconds, which holds the information at four seconds, make sure that the scale of this object is 0%. Basically, what After Effects is now going to do is it's actually going to calculate the scale between these two keyframes in order to give us a smooth transition. So if I just quickly play this animation, as you can see, the shape actually decreases in size between zero and four seconds. So it's 100% here, and then it decreases until it reaches 0% at four seconds. Now we can actually go ahead and change the scale later after that again. So say that was our initial animation. If suddenly at five seconds, I wanted to be about 50% again, I can just input that value over five seconds. And as you can see, if I play our animation from zero to four, it's going to decrease from 100% to zero, and then suddenly go back up to 50% by five seconds between four and five seconds. So this is how keyframes work. You can basically create as many as you want in your composition, one per frame, and After Effects will create a smooth transition between these keyframes. If I wanted to make a sudden jump after five seconds, I could go one frame further and then quickly go to 100. And then as you can see, if I just play it from the start again, it's going to decrease between one and four, zero and four, and then suddenly jump between five and 501 from 50% to 100%. So you can do any number of ways to actually animate your scale just by using keyframes. Now I'm just gonna quickly undo that. So what I can do is just press on the stopwatch to get rid of all of the keyframes. And as you can see, it's now gray, so which means we can't animate it any further. Now lastly, what I want to cover is what this link button basically does. So like I said, we have an X value and a Y value, a scale for the X and a scale for the Y. And at the moment, when I've been changing one of these values, it's actually changed both. And this is because it's currently linked. But if I press on this link and now change the X value, as you can see, I now actually only scale the shape in the X axis. I could do the same for the Y axis. I can increase the Y or decrease the Y until we get a very elongated shape in the X. So this is just a way in order to actually animate the X and the Y separately. If you have a 3D layer, you'd have a third number, which it was the Z axis. But I'm actually going to cover all of the kind of 3D space things in After Effects in another video later on. So if you're interested in that, then do keep an eye out on the channel for it. And then once again, we can also animate using both values separately. So if I just press on the stopwatch again, we've created a keyframe and then I can move to three seconds and perhaps increase the Y and this time decrease the X. I'll just do it very dramatically so we get a very clear animation. And then go to start and press play. As you can see, there's now a smooth transition where we're changing the X and the Y values separately. So this is exactly what we did a minute ago, except this time we're actually changing the X and Y values separately. So we're able to actually custom our animation a bit further. Great, so those were the fundamentals of how to actually scale your layers in Adobe After Effects. If you're interested in learning how you can actually easily center the anchor points in any object in Adobe After Effects, then do check out the video in the top right hand corner of the end screen. And also do remember to leave a like on the video if you enjoyed the content and do subscribe to the channel to make sure you never miss a new After Effects tutorial.